Wouldn't it be nice to pack our camera bags and travel to a faraway exotic location, shooting the glorious mountains of Patagonia or the deserts of, of some, I don't know, I can't think of a desert. Well, that would be the dream, but sadly, it's not a reality for most of us. The thing is, with kids, families, overtime, oh! <laughs> uh, overtime, shift work, it's a miracle we get any time to shoot at all. Come on. Add to that the looming threat of a recession, inflation, interest rates going up, record-breaking fuel prices. Man, I tell you what, it'd be a miracle if most of us can get a weekend camping trip, let alone a two-week holiday to an exotic foreign destination. My point is that for most of us, the local park is about as exotic as it's gonna get for landscape photography. Most of the time, anyway. And let's face it, where we live is boring. I don't mean any offence by that, but familiarity breeds content. At least where I live is boring anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's lovely, but it's not exactly Patagonia. Add to the fact that it's the middle of summer, so if you want any kind of light for landscape photography, it's going to mean getting up at 3.30 in the morning. Mm. Well, luckily, about two weeks ago, I got my camera converted to infrared. So if you don't like getting up at 3.30 in the morning for your landscape photography, don't worry about it. The beauty of infrared photography is it works best in the middle of the day in bright sunshine. And if you can't travel the world to exotic locations, it really doesn't matter because infrared will transform the most mundane of landscapes into a world-beating photography hotspot. <laughs> I'm laughing because I was getting a bit carried away. I don't think I can transform the local parks of Whitley Bay into a world-beating photography location, but I do think I can make a relatively boring and familiar feeling location into something that feels new and exciting with an infrared camera. Ah, so we begin our quest on the corner of a very busy road. And actually what got my attention are these trees and caravans, and I can honestly say, <laughs> I've never found these trees or this caravan park inspiring or photogenic or any, anything like that. But in the sunshine with an infrared camera, I've got to say, not a bad start to this challenge of trying to make the uh, mean streets of Whitley Bay <laughs> look interesting. I think I've got my work cut out for me, but uh, yeah, I don't know. This image caught my eye and it's, it's, a, it's an average start. Oh God, I dread to think what these people are thinking about me. Oh, lurking in the bushes, taking photographs of caravans. Well, I'm almost embarrassed to show you this shot, but I'm going to blame entirely the busy traffic and the fact that I couldn't stop and really focus on the composition because I was so concerned about everybody thinking how odd this man in the bushes looked. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's my excuse for this terrible photograph. before that um, I'd never really noticed the back of the caravan park, those trees or the caravans themselves as a photography location, and for good reason, they're not great. But I've come to this old cemetery full of history, and um, I've wanted to shoot here for a while, but I've, I've, I don't know, I guess I've been waiting for the right conditions, I'm not sure, but I've, I've never really managed to come here and get a shot, although I've walked here many times. But with the infrared camera and the sun coming out, honestly, I think there's a phenomenal shot to be had just behind me. It's nice and quiet. There's no one here. I've got to say it's much better than a busy road behind a caravan park. So yeah, I think this is the place to be. Oh, it's so good. The way, the way that this place has been landscaped is phenomenal. Lines of these trees, perfectly manicured trees of these historical graves dating back hundreds of years and this beautiful I think it's crematorium just in the center and the way that the trees frame the crematorium with the infrared and the lights is just man this is what this is this is why i paid 260 quid to have my uh, xt3 converted absolutely glorious
So this video is supposed to be about me photographing what is a boring town and making it interesting with infrared. But what I didn't mention is that my hometown is on the coast. It has a seafront and a lighthouse and breaking waves at a beach and is actually very interesting for a photographer. So I thought it was a bit of a cop out if I photographed the coast. But I couldn't resist these two ladies sat on this bench with the little cheeky crow hopping into frame there. I just thought it made for a beautiful minimalist image. But of course another problem with the coast is that it's incredibly busy and I will mention this again in this video but I cannot film and talk to the camera whilst there's people around. So it's time to move on away from the coast and try a completely different location. I think we've hit the mother load. I think we've hit the jackpot. Now I said the cemetery was a good place to photograph. Man, it's not. I'll tell you what's a good place to photograph. Industrial parks. Big, old, loads of money industrial parks. So I say loads of money industrial parks. What I mean are these big companies that like to rent out these extravagant offices with lots of glass. So I've struggled to find lone trees where I live. A lone tree in a field is perfect for infrared photography. But let me tell you this, in an industrial park, you don't need a lone tree in a field. You need a lone tree in front of an extravagant glass building. See, although this building I'm photographing appears to be green with a bit of white and gray, with infrared photography, even on an overcast day like it's now become, the glass just appears to be jet black whilst the green tree is still really popping, giving me that contrast. And really, quite an interesting shot. As much as I enjoyed photographing the industrial park, I was all too aware of the size and sensitivity of some of the businesses that resided there. And because of this, there were both security patrols and wardens who wouldn't take too kindly to a strange bloke filming and photographing everything. So I ducked off into a little nature reserve just on the outskirts of the industrial park. And I tell you what, I'm glad I did because the next three images might well be my favorites from the day. So I'm photographing what might seem like an incredibly obscure subject. In fact, you'd argue it's not even a subject. It's just there, that little tree just off the path next to all the other trees and in the background a pylon now to the eye. It looks nothing, it looks a mess, it looks ridiculous. But with infrared, the light hitting the tree seems to separate that single lone tree from all of the bushes on the side. And then we have the juxtaposition of the, the industrial pylon with these what now can only be described as storm clouds sort of dominating the sky. And actually, it looks really dramatic. And that's what I'm loving about the infrared is how dramatic and how much contrast it brings to the scene. And actually, you don't need blue skies. You just, yeah, just, just a day like today is perfect. All right, I've taken a few steps further forward before I was framing the tree with the pylon. I've come, what, 10 feet <laughs> up the footpath? And I see that there's two pylons and with the, the light and the sky and the way that the infrared just makes everything look, look so dramatic. Man, it looks so, so cool. Now I'm shooting with a 35 mil lens, which is full frame equivalent of about 50 mil, which means this is quite tight. The pylons are quite tight, but that adds tension. Like these images, they're not supposed to be pretty. You wouldn't necessarily want to hang them on your wall, but with the, the tight cropping of the pylons, the incredibly dramatic feel of the storm clouds with the vibrant white foliage and the black contrasting metal work, man, it looks fantastic. So actually a tight crop works really, really well. Yeah, 
Yeah, that works. That works. Yes. Ah, oh, this will work. Surely this will work. A couple of things worth mentioning. <laughs> Like this is a busy footpath with lots of families, kids, cyclists, dog walkers, and me filming here with a camera blocking the footpath, talking to myself and shooting with two cameras. Man, I look weird. I look like a weirdo. So as fun as the photography is, which it is, and I'd recommend it to anybody, video and photography, mm, not as fun. My stress levels are incredibly high. <laughs> I feel like every time I stop and film, I've got a window of about three seconds. Anyway, I've switched to a uh, 10 to 24 lens, super wide angle tree, massive what look like dock leaves. Yeah, surely this is going to work. Well, me being me, I was far more worried about people coming down that footpath than actually <laughs> recording a video for you guys. So I didn't shoot any B-roll of the subject that I was photographing, but trust me, it was well worth stopping for and shooting. I don't know about you, but I would say that was a success. These are images that I never would have taken if I was just out with my my usual camera. Don't get me wrong, obviously, I, I love um, normal, you know, photography and normal lights, sunrise, sunsets, hiking in the mountains and all of that. But there was a gap, a gap in my photography, uh, well, a gap in my photography, and it was the middle of the day, the middle of summer, and my local industrial business park. Yeah, maybe. But... You get my point, and I've actually got an image, maybe even two from today that I'm genuinely happy with. Right, this video is sponsored, and I am ever the professional, and trust me, when I'm riding around these parks and industrial areas, man, I, I'm focusing so much on the video and the photography and, and not filming when there's people around and not getting weird looks and not getting accosted by security. Man, my brain is doing a lot, basically, so I can't remember. <laughs> what I'm supposed to read for the, uh, for the sponsors. But I can tell you this, today's sponsor is NordVPN. NordVPN is great. If you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. If you value your privacy and online security, then you know a VPN is what you want. And if you're gonna get one, I'd definitely consider going for NordVPN. Let me read you out some of the reasons why. It's official that NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there. Now this is the stuff that's really interests me. It's got an advanced anti-malware feature. So basically NordVPN is like having an antivirus software on your computer. So it has what's called threat protection and essentially NordVPN will block intrusive ads and it will also block trackers. So when you go on a website, those websites might try and track your online activity to sell your data and all that horrible stuff that should be illegal. I don't know why it's not illegal. Uh, anyway, it blocks all of that without even having to think about it. That's good. Here's a really good one. A while back, there was a bit of a virus going around where you'd get a fake email from YouTube, you'd click on the link and it was a dodgy link and then bosh, you were signed out of your YouTube account and uh, a hacker would then be in control of your YouTube. So essentially you got hacked, you couldn't get in, you lost everything. Friends of mine had this happen to them. Well, NordVPN automatically scans links and downloads for malware. So if you were gonna click on a dodgy link or download a dodgy file, NordVPN would essentially put a stop to that. So there's there's a ton of other stuff, but <laughs> I've only allocated a 60 second slot. Um, so if you are interested in NordVPN and you wanna learn more, go to NordVPN dot com forward slash heaton and i believe i hope i'm right here because i don't want to have to re-record this ah ever the professional i got it wrong so if you want to go to nordvpn slash heaton sign up for a two-year plan get a month free plus you get a 30-day money-back guarantee so if you don't like it after a month get your money back so yeah nordvpn slash heaton learn more and uh yeah it is it's one of those things you don't think about but once you have it you can't live without it bit like infrared photography. <laughs>